Hello, and thanks for watching. You're tuned in to Notations of a Nappy Girl, episode 48. And just let me clarify something really quickly before I delve into today's message. I got about five or six emails about my hair. I am still natural. This is a weave, and it's okay. Because I can switch it up when I want to switch it up. But actually, I just switched it up. See, now you got me looking at it. I switched it up because I was doing a lot of traveling. And I honestly did not want to have to fight with those curls of mine to get them to do what they're supposed to do. So this is just temporary. I am still the one and only nappy girl. Yes, I am. So now with that being said, I want to delve in today. It's going to kind of touch on last week's message about self-worth, self-validation, things of that nature, but it's going to go full circle with my common thread of communication. So I start off with communication because I just feel like anything in life requires, I'm trying to think of the word, effective communication. And I'll start with a personal issue. Me personally, I do not like when people cannot communicate, whether it's via email, Facebook, texting, whatever. Technology has killed the ability for people to talk to one another and to talk to each other and not at each other because there is a huge difference in the two. Now, my personal situation, and yes, I fidget a lot on camera because even now I'm still nervous doing these things. Um personal situation my son and I and everybody knows the man child is 20 years old now well mommy's only 38 so I still look at him as if he's a baby sometimes which is very very wrong on my part so I tend to when I get upset you can't tell from the videos but when I get upset I have the mouth of a drunken sailor on a five-day pass at the whole house I mean my mouth is ridiculous and um <clears throat> He and I had a difference of opinion, I'll call it that, because he doesn't argue with me um, out of respect, and he values his life, so he bet not. But I kind of went in and I said some things that I did not mean. Anger just blah, 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 just comes out. And um, I had to later apologize via Facebook. And I had some people question me on that via inbox, instant message, and emails to ask me, well, why did I feel as a parent I needed to apologize to a kid and here's my thing I apologize to him as a human being I did not apologize to quote unquote a kid one he's no longer a kid so you know where they say you get respect by giving respect he respects me he does not curse me he does not put his hands on me he does not disrespect me um, he don't talk back we have heated discussions I allow him to speak his mind but at the same time there's a certain level of decorum and respect that he has to adhere to or there's the front door and he can hit it so he and I did not see eye to eye on this particular issue and it wasn't even something major it just so happens to be I was jet lagged I was irritated I was sleepy my tummy hurt and I kind of just let loose on him the beautiful thing about communication is, well, it's a double-edged sword to start with because what you say, you cannot take back. You cannot pull those things back out of the universe. It's like telling somebody I love you and then coming back to say, oops, I didn't mean that. Can I take that back? Hell no, you can't take it back. That's where apologies come into play. I do, And don't get me wrong, I didn't disrespect him. I didn't call him no punk ass mother and all this stuff that people say to their kids. I've never said to my child that I hate him, I wish he was never born, none of that, because he changed my life. I am happy he is here. But with the ineffective communication, what I allowed to happen is the higher my anger got, the more I fed into the anger and the more he tried to deflect it. And I kept going. I kept going. You don't have anything to say. Well, what can you say to somebody who's yelling at you? Case in point, I learned that in my childhood and I didn't like for people to say hurtful things to me, but I did that to my child. Same thing goes for relationships. Some people, some of you are in long distance relationships. Some of you are overseas serving in the military. Some of you are in college. Some of you just have a job that separates you and your spouse, your beloved, your significant other, your honey boo boo child, whatever you want to call it. And within those moments of being separated, touching on a previous video about proximity, you get frustrated. 
You can't see them. You can't hold them. You can't touch them. You can't talk to them the manner in which you would like to. So it does create frustration. What we have to remember is not to let that frustration get the best of you because what it does is it breaks down the communication because now, because you miss that person and you are, what did somebody call me? Tell me it was called, um, in your feelings. And you get in your feelings and you miss this person. You go to call them, they don't respond quick enough. You go to text them, they don't respond quick enough. Now you have an attitude. Now you're upset every single time you talk to them, even though they could have been doing something as important as sleeping. They could have been eating. They could have been in the shower. They could have been at work, whatever. But when you get in your feelings, you don't want to hear any of that. None of it. It means nothing to you. You are just pissed. People don't understand. Just like violence begets violence, attitude begets attitude. And with attitude, proximity issues, not seeing eye to eye issues, and insecurity, those are things that do not go together. I mean, they don't match. When I say they don't match, I mean, you put those things together, that's like taking a 600 pound lady putting her in some leopard leggings, dropping her off at the buffet and only giving her $10. That's how much they don't match. Insecurity will cause you to say the foulest stuff in the world to your partner, your mate, your husband, your wife, whatever. Uh, indecision, uncertainty, issues with proximity and mistrust, all things that are learned behaviors and can be changed. We instantly pile all that on our partner. This is what we don't get when it comes to communication. The way you talk to somebody is going to be the way they talk to you. So as soon as a person picks up the phone or the video chat or the email and your attitude is, where the hell were you? Or why the blank, blank, blank didn't you call me back? Or, you know, I don't think you were really out with your sister because I saw your sister post on Facebook and you weren't in the picture. Whatever you throw at them, they're going to throw back because then they instantly get on the defensive and it's like, well, damn, what I do to you? I just answered the phone and it sets the tone for your conversation. Best thing to do when a conversation is going wrong. Yes, I'm looking at myself. When a conversation is going wrong, whether it's with your boss, a coworker, a family friend, a lover, a child, whatever, stop. Pump your brakes right then. You know how they say, fight us to your corner. That's what you got to do. You can't come out like Mayweather every single time you have a disagreement. And why did I say Mayweather? Because I want to see that fight tonight. Who's having a fight party? Lake County, Florida. I need to know. Anyway, if you come out swinging every single time, they going to come out swinging because they got to put their guard up too. Now you guys are like this. And it's not doing anything. It's going to blow up. And that's exactly what we do with ineffective communication. It blows up. Now, going full circle, your conversation with other people can affect how they feel about themselves. I've had to learn this myself. I have a very snide way, I've been told, of stating things. And I don't know, I did not know that if it was me personally taking a shot at this person or if it was just me stating how I felt. I mean, when I make the statements, I don't have any malicious intent. I don't feel any kind of way like, ooh, let me say this and get this one in. It's just something that happens. But when a person brought it to my attention that, hey, you know, every time we talk, you bring up something negative or you bring up something bad that I did to you or something that happened. And it's like, whoa, I didn't realize that because I never want somebody to talk to me and feel like they have to be on guard because every time Nita opens her mouth, she going to cut you down and put you in your place. That's not the kind of person I am. So I've been retailoring my communication. I have cut down on texting simply because words are very literal. I could tell you in the text message, F you. And yes, I'm trying to quit cursing. I could say F you. And in a text message, that's all you see is F you. You don't see. I could have been joking. I could have been laughing. So I've cut it down to keep down on confusion. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. And if at all possible, I say it directly to that person so they can hear the inflection, the tone and the purpose behind my words. And a lot of times we as human beings, because we're emotional creatures, we don't do that. We just speak. Or we just, you know, we got to get the text in and moving them thumbs and typing on Facebook and not really understanding 
how somebody makes us feel. The art of letter writing has gone out the window. And these are different communication tools we need to get back. So this is my assignment to you, my watchers. You love somebody? You want to express something to somebody? Don't text them. Allergies. Don't text them. Don't even call them. Write them a letter. How long has it been since you put pen to paper and really let your words flow out of you to explain how you feel about a situation, the person in particular, no matter what? Speak from your heart, but be wary of the things that you say because you can't take words back because you can damage somebody's self-esteem or their viewing of self-worth. And even though it's self and they should have it in place, some of us weren't taught. Some of us don't know how to value ourselves. So if we create a culture in which we value one another, everybody's self-worth will be up here because it's like, hey, I value you and this is why. You value me and this is why. And this is how we can effectively communicate with one another and build an environment of love and nurturing. So I hit the 10 minute mark again. That's my piece for today. That's all I have to say. Well, it's really not all I have to say. Y'all know that. But it's all I'm going to say right here because these videos take forever to upload. I need a new computer. Anyway, be good, people, and I will be back. Yay.